Hello friends and welcome or welcome back. My name is Mandy. I like to talk about makeup, makeup panning, art, and the real things happening in my life. And today I have an update for a project created by Deb B and it is Enjoy Your Eyeshadows. So if you want to see this, uh, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned. Alright, this is a project called Enjoy Your Eyeshadows. It was created by Deb B here on YouTube and it was inspired by many of the eyeshadow projects that are out there floating around. The Pen That Palette, the Pan Those Eyeshadows, the Project Level Up, the No Pan Left Behind, all of those. And this is kind of a free-for-all project where you work on your eyeshadows in any way shape or form um, to enjoy them and um, yeah get use out of them. I decided to bring in um, rotating uh, palettes so that every month I'm focusing on a, a few pa handful of palettes and work on them for about a week or so or rotate between them um, and get some love on them. So that is how I'm doing this and um, let's see how I did. So the first set of palettes I picked were five palettes. I have my Rimmel of Vi Electric Violet, the City Mini in Concrete Runway, my Alza uh, 2 Mini Ocean from Odin's Eye, I have the I Heart Revolution Heartbreakers in Lucky, and the Juvia's Place uh, Rebel Grays. So I worked on these palettes over the last month. And there are some hits and misses, I have to admit. So the Electric Violet is my Pan That Palette for this year, and I worked on hit using as many shades as possible. I took a page out of uh, Shelly's book and I made little note cards. I was looking for post-it notes, but I seemed to be out, so I had these half-size um, note cards and I wrote down the palette and each of the shades and then every time I was doing my makeup I would tally how many uses I had in each shade and as you can see I did quite a bit of damage on this palette. There are a few colors that I only used once um, but I used them. I used every shade in this palette at least once. A lot of the shades are very similar. This one, this one, this one. Um, it's, it's an all purple palette basically. It does have blue and some mauves in it which does give some nice variety. We have the mauves down here and then we have some mid-tone purples, the blues here and here, um, and some more purples and then one black which makes it is a very nice soft black that makes a good eyeliner color. A nice true black that's kind of sheared out but you know you get the idea. Um, the most I used, I talked about this in my Pan That Palette, the most used shades are probably these two right here. Um, this mauve shade I used as a transition a lot of, for a lot of looks, and then I used this one for an inner corner. Um, I ha do have a couple of these shades on today. I have this one here, which is in, um, my American Panning Story, and it is on the inner half of my lid, and then this one here which pulls very, I would think it would be more blue, but it's very, it's got a very ultraviolet shine to it. And I have that in the inner corner and my brow bone today. And then, yeah, the rest of these shades are very lovely. I enjoy using this palette and I will continue using it because it is my Pan That palette. The next palette I worked on, okay, on my list, I have the Mini Ocean palette from um, Odin's Eye, the Alba 2, and the color story, I was really excited by this one. I thought this would be a really good choice. Very beautiful blues on this end, and then the brown oranges, not too bad. Um, this light blue is the only matte in the palette, and this blue is very creamy. which, you know, hadn't noticed, but it's very, in, it's very intense 
and it has a tendency, I, I would probably have to play with it more, but it has a tendency to run away from me and get out of control. Um, and then these two shades are just too orange on me and I didn't enjoy it. This palette was actually the one I did this, liked the least and I'm actually decluttering it. Um, I did have this in a project for No Pan Left Behind and um, as you can see on my card I did use all the shades at least once. I used that blue twice trying to get a hang of it but um, and I had, did use them prior to this project. But yeah, this was not something I enjoyed using it, and when it came its turn to be used, I really dreaded using it and actually combined it with other things, and um, yeah, I'm actually going to be passing this on to somebody else, and hopefully they will enjoy it more, and if they don't, well, they can pass it on to somebody else. It's a beautiful shade, it's just the formula is, I don't, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting formula, and I wasn't expecting it. Trying to figure out where to put that. All right, let me wipe some of these swatches. Okay, that's not working very well because it's dry, but that's okay. Next up on my list, um, or just the way I'm pulling the cards, I have my Juvia's Place um, Rebel Grays. I really enjoyed this. I used each shade several times, at least twice. The problem, I'm the thing with this pa palette is it is limited in colors. It works very well with other palettes as a complement um, complementary palette. Um, these two silvers are very similar. This one's more of a satin, and um, it, it it makes a nice base or transition color. Um, but these, like I said, these two silvers are very similar. One is a little more cooler, and one's a little bit warmer. But once you get them on the eye, especially if you pair them with the dark shade they're really indistinguishable. Um, I, I am happy I have this palette and I will continue to use it and I enjoyed it very much. Um, but yeah, there's uh, not a whole lot to say on that. So that will uh, live on for another day. And then I will talk about the Revolution Heartbreakers palette. Um, this is one palette I actually realized I did not use all the colors. Um, mainly I focused on the colors I have in projects. I have these three um, greens in my 50 shades of green and you can see that goldy green in the middle there, number four, has got a nice dip going in it. And you know, who knows, maybe I'll hit pan in that. Um, but I used those four and the one in the middle, which I can't remember what project that is in, but it's in a project. And those are the only shades actually in this palette that I used. So one, four, five, and seven. One, four, five, and seven. Um, yeah, and I realized I need to bring this back and play with it more. I have not touched these. I think I've touched this one once or twice. I may have tried this one once. I don't think I've ever used the brown or the yellow. Um, and I'm not sure how I would use them in combination with these colors, but I would like to give a chance to try that out. Um, but I'm going to put this one aside for now and bring it back later, but um, yeah, this one could really use more love. Because I just, I didn't, I focused on the colors I had, but I did use them quite a few times. And then the last palette to talk about is my Maybelline City Mini in the colorway Concrete Runway. Um, I think this one is available still, but hard to find. Um, and this is what it looks like. It is a very dark palette. And I did use most of the shades. Number two, so I did um, one, two, three, and then I mixed my own shade here, which is Franken shade four, five, and six. And so the white shade is, um, is a base. I have that in my transition today. It's just a white base. It kind of doesn't really do anything. It doesn't have much shimmer for a highlight, but you can use it as a brow, brow bone highlight or inner corner. Um, I did franken it with this one here, which is a combination of um, the white and the purple here. Yeah, there. <laughs> and then just a little bit of the um, silver. Um, number two was the black. I did not use that because I worked on other blacks. Um, the dark purple shade I do have in a project, and um, I enjoy I use that the most. Um, I have that on on the outer corner. Nope. Yes, the outer corner and on my lower lash line. 
Um, and then I have the blue in the middle of my eye look, which is topped off with the blue from my other palette. Um, and then this shade, I was trying to get something lighter. It's not really that terribly much lighter, but it is a... Let's see if I can build it up so it's visible. And I'll give you a comparison to the full version. So there is a comparison. So this is the Franken shade, which is a bit lighter and a bit shimmery. And then this is the purple, which has that black base. So both of them, they didn't turn out that much lighter, but I might Franken some more later and try it again. Um, but yeah, the, that is, I enjoyed that palette. It is definitely one of my oldest palettes um, and really want to get a lot of love and use out of that. But I did use most of the shades. Like I said, it is a very dark color palette and it is probably something that would be best paired with other, um, other palettes. So let me wipe off my swatches and we'll move on to what I'm going to bring in to work on for this month. Okay, so this month I'm going to continue working on my Pan Matte palette, um, and then I'm going to bring in four more palettes to work on in conjunction with it, or by themselves. Um, they are all in, have shades in a project ed somewhere for some usage, um, because I have such a small collection. That's the way it goes. Um, so the first palette I'm bringing in this month is my Sapphire for September from BH Cosmetics. And this is what it looks like. It is a beautiful blue and purple, uh, blue and green color story. And I have these two, no, yes, no. I, I have this green in my 50 shades of purple. And then I have the blue and the dark green in my Zodiac Project Pan. Um, I have never, that I know I've used this color or this color and then this is a pressed um, glitter and then this one here which is sapphire I used in 50 shades of purple last year um, but definitely some beautiful blue and green color combinations and I might even try playing with that um, glitter I don't know how I feel about that but um, the use I have gotten out of this palette I really enjoyed, but like I said, I don't think I've used any of the shimmers in this palette except for the sapphire. So I'm looking forward to playing with that, and I'll give you swatches of them. Let's see. So the first one is called Sporty, and the second one is called Cool. So the silver one is Sporty, and then the teal blue is Cool. And those are beautiful colors that I wish I had used more often, or you wish I had used at all. Um, and then I'll give you a swatch of sapphire, which is a beautiful purple blue. Just gorgeous colors. So looking forward to playing with those. The next palette I'm bringing in, I should make better, smaller swatches, but that's okay. Um, you've probably seen this one once or twice. It is my BH Cosmetics, again, um, Venom palette, and this is a nine pen palette, and it has some beautiful grays and purples and white, um, has beautiful shocks of color, um, that are surprising for this color story. Um, I have those two there, so this one is called Bad Blood. It is sort of a dark, it is a dark purple. And then this one on the bottom, which is really pretty. I don't know what, if it can show much. Here we go. And that is the one at the bottom called Femme Fatale. And then I think this one has a bit of, ooh. And that one on the bottom um, is called Biter, and actually I thought it had a blue shift, but now looking at it, it looks like it's a dark green metallic. So those are really beautiful, um, beautiful color stories in here, um, surprising pops of color, like I said, and, um, yeah, looking forward to playing with this 
um, having more fun. I keep looking at these colors and being surprised by them. Like this one is very pinky and this one is blue and this one is plain white. These are the only three mattes and the rest are either satins or shimmers. And yeah, this is something I definitely want to get more use out of. I can make some beautiful looks with that. Um, and looking forward to using that. I do have um, two shades in here, I should mention, that are in projects. I have fangs here in my same pan last year for five uses, and I have Silent Killa in my Paranormal Pantivity for, I think, 13 uses. Um, and so I will definitely be using those two shades at least, but I'm going to try and use all of the shades in here. Um, especially, um, I'm going to, I'm gra gravitating towards pink right here, but this is a really color, beautiful color. Like I said, I thought it was more of a green, but now swatching it, it looks more dark blue. So we'll play with that and see what we can get out of it. I don't know if it's blue or green. It might be blue. It might be green. Who knows? Let me get wipe those off and make some more room. But two more palettes I'm going to bring in. Okay, the next one is my Ace Beauté Violet Sage Palette. And I have this in, I think, 50 Shades of Green for No Pan Left Behind. And um, I have swatched a couple of the colors, but I have not touched this palette at all. This is new to my collection, and you can see there's more of those pinks that I'm gravitating towards. We've got purples and some greens. I have a lot of purples and greens in my, in my collection. So this is one I haven't, don't have any opinion on because I haven't used any of them. And they're really nice. I can give you swatches of, I'll give you swatches of those three shimmers. Those are the only three shimmers. The rest are all mattes, which is interesting. Um, now I don't remember which one's which. Yes, I do. Alright, and those are the three shimmers. So the top one is Wisteria, the middle one is Anemone, and the bottom one is Cosmos. And that's them in the palette. So that is Anemone, the light pink, Wisteria, the medium, and then Cosmos, the sort of brownie color. So those are something I'm looking forward to experimenting with and trying, because I haven't tried that palette at all. And that is beautiful colors that I will enjoy using. And for with Valentine's Day right around the corner, a lot of pinks are coming my way. I'm feeling the pinks because I have been wearing a lot of blues and grays and purples this month and a little bit of greens. So, um, yeah. And finally, the last color palette I have has names very similar to the ones in the Ace Beauté. This is the Alva. And... Um, Hopefully I like the formula better than I did with the o Mini Ocean. Um, I have used some of the shades before. I've used this one here, Baby's Breath, for um, child, uh, no, I Heart the 90s, and I'm currently working on Morning Glory and Cosmos again. Um, in other sh other other projects, um, Morning Glory. I give you a swatch. Is a beautiful reddy brown, and this Cosmos is very coppery, and it has glitter in it. And then Baby's Breath. So Baby's Breath is the one on the bottom. Beautiful, smooth, creamy formula. The Cosmos in the middle is sort of that orangey, but it has, um, get it close up. It has a rougher texture. It has like glitters in it, which I, I don't like that formula very much. And then the top one is the Morning Glory, which is a matte. That is a beautiful sort of muddy red color. Um, but there are other shades in here that look very attractive that I would like to try and play with. Um, let me swatch a couple. So we have Camellia. Let me swatch them on the other hand. And Dandelion. Lilac. And 
and oh there's another one um we'll go with dahlia it's like there's two other shades here i'm like they both look very pretty we'll swatch both of them let me wipe off my finger and we'll swatch this one it's like as i look at this like these sh shades look be oh my god that's gorgeous okay that has got to be a winning color I like that formula. All right, so there we go. That bright one right here, that's the one I really like. That is that creamy formula like baby's breath. That is called Cherry Blossom. Above that, um, now I don't remember. I think that's Dandelion or Dahlia. I don't remember now. I think that's Dandelion. And then above that, very hard to see, that is, uh, there it is, that is uh, lilac. And that looks like it's one that's more of the, has a light base and that has more glitters in it. So I don't care for that formula with the glitters in it, but um, more of the ones that are like that cherry blossom, that looks beautiful. I like that soft creamy formula. So yeah. Um, try and, I'm going to try and use each shade in here and experiment and play with them and see which formulas I like and maybe which ones I don't. I definitely am not a fi fan of this one. This is the one with the glitters in it, but then this is the cherry blossom right here and that is a stunning creamy color. Um, Dragon's Beth, like I said, is a creamy color and there's some lovely mattes in here. This one and this one and this one. Um, and then I'll even try and play with these two yellow-orange colors and see what we can come up with. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, curious to see the different formulas um, in there. Um, that is just, <laughs> excuse me, that is beautiful. So yeah, those are the palettes I am bringing in for this month. Um, So yeah, if you have any of these palettes or suggestions on color combinations you'd like to see, um, yeah, let me know in the comments. And um, until next month, I will see you later. I'm trying to get rid of all these swatches before I forget and get glitter all over. Anyway, um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all my updates by hitting that little bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a video. And until my next video, take care of yourselves, be true to you, and I'll see you later. Bye!